Hello, this is Bob Gray Sr. Welcome to Ministry Moments every Friday, three o'clock Central Time. Uh, Ministry Moments YouTube, Bob Gray Sr. Subscribe there. That way you'll get this every, every Friday at three o'clock. And of course, you can look at it at your own leisure, your own time, you're busy, and uh, you can do that on your own. Um, also, your favorite podcast, you can get this on your favorite podcast provider, or you can go to softchurchbombs.com and subscribe there and get it there also. Um, very practical, simple, not long, it's not a sermon, but uh, just kind of giving to you as I travel and young men of God ask me questions and and so on. I've, and I was privileged to be able to preach with uh, the great men of the past and to preach for me, we preach together. So I have somewhat of a little insight. And um, also we God blessed us at Longview Baptist Temple and we saw a tremendous, it was a miracle work of God. And so today I want to talk to you about boosting soul winning attendance. The more people that go soul winning, the more people get saved, more people get saved or get baptized. And then if half of those stick, you really on your way. And the big churches of the past didn't grow leaps and bounds. God said, the children of Israel, you'll take the land of Canaan little by little. And so the great churches only grew by one and a half to two a Sunday. That's all they did. But they stuck with it for 30 years and 40 years, and then it paid off. And uh, I think we got ants in our pants now. We want it overnight, and it's just not going to be that way. And so let me give you some thoughts about boosting soul winning attendance. Uh, my thing is, if five go soul winning, is it possible to have five saved? Answer is yes. If 10 go soul winning, is it possible to have 10 saved? Answer, yes. If 20 go soul winning, is it possible to have 20 saved? Yes. So apparently there's a correlation. Brother Hiles had 4,000 soul winners out on out on the streets. And here's the shocker. He had no church-wide soul winning night. It, it wouldn't have worked. I mean, in Chicago, they had a tough time making it there for Wednesday night Bible study, let alone uh, another night for a soul winning in that Chicago land area. The, the tra traffic unbelievable. But he also said, proved something the rest of us have missed, and that is daily soul winning. He has members won souls daily. And because of that, they could baptize 10, 15,000 a year uh, because they were winning folks every day and picking them up. Uh, the converts I had down the aisle, I didn't get down the aisle because of the bus ministry. I got down the aisle because of where I worked. The people I led to Christ at work and brought them to church and down the aisle and uh, while I was there. So I, it works. Uh, I thought Mrs. Robinson, who's in heaven, our records secretary, told me one day that we had more people saved throughout the week than we did on Thursday night. And we had a mailbox out front and, and people put the convert slips in there. And then we, she would gather them every day, type them up and then have them ready for Saturday meetings. So let me talk to you about boosting soul winning attendance, give you some thoughts. Number one, emphasize one night, emphasize one night. Now, if you're in a metropolitan area uh, and you are Jack Hiles Jr., <laughs> then don't listen to me. But if you're the average church in America, 90% of our churches are not in mega uh, metropolitan areas. And uh, we're, we're not there. We're basically rural churches. And uh, so, number one, have emphasis on one night. I like Thursday night. And I'll tell you why. Because we have 12 sections of the lower floor, 10 sections in the balcony. And on Wednesday night, at, after I had whatever Bible study I taught, I was going to go into the thing tomorrow night, so Wednesday night. And I would go section by section. I know, I know you're, you're cringing right now thinking about it, but I went section by section. And people say, who's going to go with me? I'm going tomorrow night. I wouldn't take preaching engagements out on Thursday. Wouldn't do it. I was going to lead our church in soul winning. I was going to lead it. And uh, so have emphasis on one night. I like Thursday night because I can have the people say yes to going and put the pressure on, put the B on them. Number two, quit using the word visitation. Start using the word soul winning. I immediately said, I, I said well, are you going on visitation this week? I said, no, no, don't say that. We're going soul winning this week. And I made kind of a joke out of it, laughed about it. But boy, the people, they bit into it. Number three, have those who are there already invite those who are not there already. 
Number three, have those who are there already invite those who are not there already. Now listen to this thought here. I can hit them over the head about it, but nothing works like a guy sitting in a pew leaning to his buddy who was not there the week before and say, look, would you come with me, be my partner Thursday night? They'll get more people to come. We had 13 for weeks when I first got there on visitation and I changed it quickly to soul winning. And I told them, I said, invite your, your friends to come. Don't, don't expect me to get them here. I can't get them here, but you can. And boy, did it work. Did it work? And I remember one time I preached at the Metropolitan Baptist Church in uh, in uh, Tennessee, and uh, I Memphis, Tennessee. And I remember walking through, and a fellow had a song. The music man had song sheets out. He said, "Brother Ray, come here. I'm working on a new song." And I said, "Well, let me look at it. House is full, but the fields are empty. You probably remember it. House is full, but the fields are empty." And I thought, uh, wow, that's a great. I said, can I have a copy of that? I got a copy, brought it home, had our our choir leader sing it on a Wednesday night. And I handed out cards and I we were pushing 100 out on Thursday night. And I said, well, I want to break that. I, I want to break it. I gave out cards. Would you sign up? We had 130 people sign up that night. 132 showed up the next Thursday. And we would go count them, say it. They would count themselves. One, two, three, four. And oh, it was exciting. And we had 132 uh, plus show up. And man, it never dropped below that. And when I retired, we had 625 people out on soaring on Thursday. Now, I'm just saying to you that have, have emphasis on one night. I'm talking about boosting your soul winning attendance. Number two, quit using the word visitations. Change it to soul winning. Now, Brother Hauser, he said soul winning visitation. We knew what he meant. They knew what he meant. John Rice. We knew what they meant, but I, I wanted to, I wanted to step it up, put a little bit more pressure on. So I said, we're going to call it soul winning. Um, next, have those who are faithful already there, invite those who are not there. And that would be the silent partner. You see, number four, um, publicize the attendance, the soul winning attendance, publicize the soul winning attendance, let people know. And uh, by the way, they'll go around themselves after they show up and say, man, we had 25 people out last Thursday night. And uh, so on, so and prior, uh, push the attendance. Number th number three, number five. I'm sorry. Publish a soul winning paper with uh, uh, to put on each chair. Soul winning. We had a red soul winner paper. We put it on every chair, and for 15 minutes, a staff member got up and taught that paper. He he did it himself. He came up with the points. Very practical. He would get up and teach, and then I would stand up the last five minutes and say, "Bless God, everybody stand. Everybody stand." And I said, look, we're going so well. Look, I'm going to see somebody saved tonight. <laughs> now, I need your help. I'm going to do my part. Now, you do your part. They love the pastor, and they will. They'll respond to it. They did here, and it worked, by the way. So publish a soul winner paper. Ours was a red soul, eight and a half by 14. Next, print up convert slips. We had a little bit of convert slip with all the information on there. And we would put three on each, each chair when we were in the fellowship hall, and we got the auditorium would put them on the pew but we'd have the red soul winner paper there they would pick that up and they would look at the paper as it was being taught take it with them and then the convert slips and i would have them put the date on it i said put the date up there put your name on the bottom you you just commit yourself you're not coming back till somebody gets saved all right next number seven uh place three of those convert slips on each each chair or pew Number eight, teach for 20 minutes practical helps on that from that red paper. Number nine, have the pastor give a five-minute red-hot push at the end. You get up at the, at the end. If you say, I don't have staff, have your lay leaders get up. Uh, it needs to be a part of their nature. It needs to be who they are and nothing like them saying it uh, that cements it uh, any better than that. So have the pastor give a five-minute push. Number 10, pastor and staff must be visible. You've got to be there on that church-wide soul winning night, that Thursday night. You've got to be there. You've got to be there. Um, uh, hang around afterwards and rejoice. Oh, that it was so much fun. We come back onto that carport, story after story after story, and inevitably somebody come back, they get their first convert. Oh, and people put their convert slips in that mailbox, and we'd hang around and laugh and Tell about the funny things that, that happen. War stories, if you please. Uh, next, 
have a secretary uh, pick up the convert slips and put it in a computer. And Saturday now, we gave the out, the papers out, all the converts on there out on a Saturday. So the bus captains would look at those who are on their route and they would follow up. The Sunday school teachers would follow up. The uh, division of bus division would follow up. The bus director would follow up. The Sunday school superintendents would follow up. And then we as the pastoral staff would find the adults on that list and we would follow up. So there's a good chance that we're going to get talk to at least six, seven times. And so that that really that helps to, to to boost. Oh, listen, we had page after page, one, two, three, four columns, columns of converts. And uh, if you look, if you gave a Sunday school teacher somebody already saved and they, they weren't, it wasn't cold turkey, somebody had already been by there. And boy, it made a difference. We had made it. We grew from 159 to 2,000 in, in our Sunday schools. And uh, oh, it worked. It worked. Now, boosting your soul winning tenants is very, very important. You can't let it die. And that's up to you as the pastor and leaders. You've got to keep pumping and keep that thing alive. Hope this helped you. Tomorrow, soul winning. Win somebody to Christ. You know, if you win one a week, that's 52 in a year. If 26 of them get baptized and half of those stick, that's 13. That could make a difference with one person could really make a difference so oh by the way we would take a picture once a year of our soul winning on thursday night and hand it out to everybody and put it in the front of your new testament and pray that god will keep his hand on this soul winning god will keep his hand on soul winning and uh i carry that picture with me in some of my new testaments and some of my bibles i've got 45 bibles wide margin bibles no you can't have one but anyway uh, let's let's have a great weekend and let's boost that soul winning attendance. God bless you. Have a great soul winning weekend.